This is mine and Meredith's first house we ever bought. And I've owned it for a while. But it's time to sell it. Let me tell you why. Need a place to sit. Oh, there's a place to sit right there. This cute little kid chair. Oh. This is perfect. I bought this house in 2012 for $125,000. Zillow today says this house is valued at $326,000. So in just over a decade, this house has increased in value by over $200,000, which is pretty great. But I actually moved out of this house in 2016, middle of 2016, which was seven years ago, and I've been renting it ever since. So for the last seven years, not only has it increased in value, I've also been making rental income off this house. I charged $1,500 per month, which made $18,000 per year, and over seven years made $126,000 in rental income. Add that to our $200,000 in just property value increase, and this property has made me $326,000 over the last 11 years. Passively. There was not work to do that. That was all just the property value increasing and tenants living in here. Now, of course, there were some expenses. Uh, we replaced an air conditioner once, which was a $4,000 expense. Um, actually, I think that was the biggest thing. We did replace some windows, which was like another $3,000 expense. And then, of course, income taxes. So that number is exaggerated, but not by a lot. Uh, overall, this property has made me a lot of money. It's been a good little house. Pretty much everything you see behind us, Meredith and I did ourselves. So this was back when I didn't have any money and so I didn't hire people to come work. I did the work. The sheetrock, it was me. That's why the, it goes a little like this. This texturing on the wall, that was me. I did everything. I knocked out this whole, there was a sliding door. There's an exterior sliding door here. We knocked it out and we didn't know how to put pocket doors in, but we installed pocket doors. That was me. My youngest child was born while we lived in this house. We brought him home from the hospital to this house. Meredith sanded all those down and stained them darker because they were a really light color. They were ugly and they were faded and they were gross. And so I kind of thought we would keep this house forever. It's paid off. It makes money passively. Why not? See, the thing is, I may or may not have just bought a resort. This is our old bedroom. I did not buy the resort with cash. It is not paid off. The resort, I put a huge down payment on it and I still have a huge note on it. And the problem is, notes right now are running at 7% interest rate. 7% is a lot. And the way to get rid of debt is to not pay the monthly payment, it's to pay it down fast. It's what I did with this house. We paid this house off in two years, which was really awesome. And it's what I'm gonna do with the resort as well. If I take the value of this house, $326,000, and I pay that note down, there's $326,000 less on my loan. So I'm being charged that much less interest every month. 7% of $326,000 is $22,820 a year. I'm a numbers guy. I'm really, really good at numbers. I'm sorry if this is super annoying. But this house, if I rent it out, will make me $18,000 a year. But if I sell it and put it toward that note, it will save me $22,800 a year. And it's every year. And it's less work than keeping this place rented. If you pay off a loan, there's no AC that goes out you have to pay for. It. It's just easy money. It makes total sense to just get rid of this thing, which I do have a little bit of an attachment to. This is a, a money move. It's a, I can make more money and have less stress if I sell this house and put it toward my note. And it will save me $22,000 every single year until that note is paid off. And it'll also make it towards paid off faster. All in all, this will bring me less stress uh, and more money. So let's get this house cleaned up. As you can see, the tenants actually did a really good job cleaning it up. It's pretty clean in here. Uh, mostly it's outside stuff. There's a bunch of limbs I want to trim out, um, some dead bushes, a dead tree back there, and then I just kind of want to bring all the canopy up, make it look nicer. There's also just some junk wood back there. So I'm going to go start cleaning the backyard. I think Mikey just got here with the dump trailer, and we're going to make this place freaking beautiful. <laughs> Uh, what's crazy about this tree is it's a good, I don't know, 15 feet tall. And you can see these wires that run through it. The power going to the house goes through this tree, which it did 
I don't know, probably 10 years ago too. And so I cut this tree right here. I cut everything off to where this tree was only like seven feet tall. And now it's all just grown back in that amount of time. So we probably ought to trim it again. It's running through the coax cable right now, which is not a big deal, but it's close to the power cable. So I might do a little trimming, but I did this all 10 years ago and it's all back. I said to chop these down. Didn't say how. Doing, doing work. Done. That is it. Uh, we just did a rough clean. I mean, the grass is freaking scorched back here. No one's lived in this house for um, like, a, it's been two months. Um, I've been waiting on a buyer. Um, got a buyer and so they were moving in. I just wanted to kind of be nice, but yeah, the sprinklers haven't been on for two months and it's just freaking hot in Texas right now. But there really wasn't grass back here anyway. When I lived here, St. Augustine grass everywhere. It was beautiful. We had our dog Dozer, a boxer, and so he definitely dug a lot and kept some holes in the yard. It wasn't perfect, but man, it was nice, and I watered it all the time, and the last tenants, I didn't care about grass as much as I do. I love me some green grass, but it looks all right. It'll come back as soon as we turn the sprinklers back on, but man, this has been a solid house. A good home for us, and then afterwards, a good source of passive income. For my family. It's been a really, a really good little place. And I know some of you guys who actually know about investing are gonna be like, oh, that was not a very good return on a house that's worth that much. Uh, it's, we could have rented it for a lot more. We just always had it rented to um, friends, family, um, some people who worked with us, uh, just always kept it rented with people we knew, which actually was really convenient because if you know little things would break, they would just fix them because they were appreciative. So we always had the rent kind of low uh, to make it you know easy for the people we liked to stay here and want to stay here. I would recommend rental properties to anybody. I mean, I think the easiest way to get into them is to buy a house for you that you want to live in and you can fix up because this place was pretty bad. Meredith and I bought it for like 125 and then we put like probably $15,000 worth of stuff into it over the next probably two years and tons of labor, like hundreds of hours of labor. We started, we actually did uh, stained concrete floors in here first, because it was cheap and easy, and we did all of that, so much work, and then like two years later, it like was peeling up, because we didn't know what we were doing. We were trying, we used the wrong product, and it was peeling up, and so then we decided to have these floors put in, and so like it was like a piecemeal thing over the years. Like we didn't put granite countertops in here like day one, we did that in a couple years after we had a little bit of money to splurge and get some nice granite because we wanted it to look nice and just slowly fix this place up but i would highly recommend especially if you're a young person or a young family buy yourself a little house smaller than what you want and cheaper than what you can afford when we first started looking for a house the bank told us, based on our credit, we could buy a house that cost $300,000. And Meredith and I are like, dang, we went and looked at some $300,000 houses and holy cow, those were nice. We were like, this, this feels right. But I was super into Dave Ramsey. He's a financial guy um, and he, put, he makes courses on how to get ahead financially. And his biggest thing is paying off debt and not getting more debt. And so I was super into him. And Dave says something that stuck with me. It was live like no one else so that someday you can live like no one else. What he means by that is live cheaper than everyone else. Like have a super low cost of living life so that later down the road, while all your friends were buying their Mercedes and their brand new F-150s and you were staying in your old 20 year old truck and you had this little bitty house, later down the road you have been saving money and your friends still haven't been saving anything. And then you can buy a super nice house and still live super comfortably. You're not barely scraping by to make your payments because you saved 
for 10 or 15 years and now it's super easy to live in that nice house. So now that I've owned this house for 11 years and it is worth $325,000, I can sell it. And you know what I can almost buy with that amount of money? This freaking 2005 Ford GT. It's the one I want. It's red, it has all, there are four options on those things. It has all four options. It's only $380,000. I want a red one, I want all four options. And this is my favorite car in the entire freaking world. Ford made a supercar in 2005 that blew everyone's minds. Look how freaking good it looks. That one is for sale in my hometown. It's 10 minutes away from me right now. The car of my dreams, the car that I've wanted for so long, the exact one, color, spec, everything, is 10 minutes away from me. And I could sell this house right now and go down there and almost buy the entire thing cash. I, I might be able to talk them down. I might be able to get that thing just straight up trade for this house. It's my dream car, right? I deserve that, right? But am I gonna do that? Nah, Dave Ramsey got me. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna use this house to pay down debt, to try to not get buried under this freaking abandoned resort project that is trying really hard to bury me. <sighs> Maybe someday I'll have a 2005 red Ford GT with all four options, stick shift, mid-engine V8 supercharged. Ugh. I'm gross, like real gross. You can't even tell if this shirt is soaked in sweat. You can tell when you look at my pants because it went all the way down to my pants and now my pants are looking like I wet myself. It's warm in Texas. All right, don't ask me about uh, buying this house. Don't tell me you want to buy it because I already have a buyer. This house is sold. They're going to pay me $325,000-ish uh, for this house very soon and I'll have that much less debt weighing me down. I know there's a lot of you watching right now that have some debt. You got a car payment, you got credit card payments, you got house payments, and you're also looking at something you wanna buy. Something that you wanna buy for you. And don't you freaking lie to me and tell me you need it. You don't need it. You don't need that new phone. You don't need a TV in your living room. I promise you can live without it. Whether it's a $400 thing you wanna buy or a $4,000 thing you wanna buy, Hold, pause, don't do it. Delay that gratification of having that new lawnmower, having that brand new iPhone. You don't need it yet. Just wait, just pause. And now do something unthinkable. Call up your loan guy, log into your loan account, and put all that money down on your loan. Just pay 400, 1,000, $4,000 down on your loan. It sounds crazy, but trust me. You've watched me for years, you can trust me. This is old man wisdom for you. And it's all, it's all I'm gonna tell you to do today. But freaking do it. And don't you tell me you need that motorcycle. I know you don't freaking need that motorcycle. Just try it. Just trust me. And then tell me how you feel tomorrow. You might be sad that you don't have the new iPhone because Becky has a new iPhone and she says it's awesome. Becky's in debt up to her eyeballs. Don't be like Becky. Hello? Oh, hey, dude. What's happening? Hey. Go get it. Fetch. I kind of just made a joke and called him a Mauser. I posted it on Instagram and said I finally got a Mauser and I hung him on the wall with all my pew pews. And I was like, he needs a name. And everyone's like, I think you just named him. Call him Mauser. So I like it. I think it's funny. So uh, meet Mauser. He's super cute. Also, that Instagram post got flagged and they said they can't uh, show it to any non-followers like they're censoring it because it has pew pews in it so go follow me on Twitter a link or my or X go follow me on X linked in the description below I'm gonna be posting a lot on there now because they don't limit who can see my post showing legal things on X is legal on X whereas legal things on Instagram is illegal on Instagram what is this little kid? look how cute he is what do you think he's thinking about he really is just getting into everything. Anyway, this is Mauser. He's doing great. He has not caught any mice yet, but our Mauser will hopefully be a Mauser soon enough. Also, big thanks to Shof Steelworks for making me a couple blades. He said these are made out of 1095 high carbon steel and have been fitted with cherry handles. It's an interesting shape. Check that thing out. 
whoa, whoa, man. He made this one, and then he made this one, which is actually a double edge. It's sharp up there too. Hey, Mike, thanks for making those. Appreciate you. Also, this guy, Charles Gitnick, sent us um, this book of all of his artwork, and actually, it's it's really cool. But not only did he send us a book of his artwork, he sent us some of his artwork. So, Charles. Appreciate it, we're gonna hang that thing on the wall, it's gonna be sick. Also, everyone knows your noggin's very important, so you should wear a hard hat if you do anything dangerous. But sometimes being a cowboy is important too, and it's kinda like, how do you balance which is more important, being a cowboy or protecting your noggin? Well, now you don't have to, because one of you guys uh, actually sent this to the bunker, and I don't actually have, I don't know if you sent a letter or anything, someone at the bunker just gave this to me. Um, it's a hard hat, a cowboy hat. Look at this freaking thing. <laughs> it's plastic. Hold on, let's, let's see if it works. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, whoever dropped this thing off, uh, thanks. But I feel like it wasn't actually made for me. <laughs> the next time you drive in the new truck, which we've named Merle, you better be wearing that. <laughs> you better be wearing that thing. All right, David, headbutt him. Headbutt him, or triple. Quadruple plate. All right, back to proof. All right, hey, how much um, do these guys need to donate to you, Mikey, to get you to headbutt a ram? I'll just do it. Do it for free. I'll do it for free. <laughs> All right. Don't even go. I mean, you might crack your neck. That'll protect your brain, but what about your neck? Or Hans device. Hans device <laughs> and that. You're good to go. Yes. Check out what we got. I got hose for days. And once I put that hose on this, I get lots of friends because I'll be cool with my little rider. So anyway, hydraulic hose. We got a new one made. I'm gonna try to put it on this thing right now. Ready, set, boom. It worked. It's in there. I left this end unhooked and I haven't like tied it all up. You can see it hanging right there. But I did go ahead and hook this end in. So that is in. The guys I know who know about these just said use motor oil. So we're just gonna dump some motor oil in there. And I assume I need to prime the line. So I'm gonna leave that in unhooked and just give her a bump. And I, I don't know if it's just gonna fire that stuff out. I don't know. I don't know how to get the line full of oil. It's gonna be sketchy. Okay, drink up. We're hooked up. Now it's time to prime that line. Nothing. There it is, okay. Just a little bit came out. So now we're gonna hook it up to this cylinder and leave it cracked and just kind of try to bleed it. And then maybe we'll get this corner to come up off the ground. It'll be amazing. Uh, up. Whoa! Okay. I did not think it was gonna move the car that much. All right, don't hit it, I'm gonna close it. It's bled. Okay, we're tight. Go ahead and give her a tiny bump now. Front right. Yeah, bring her up. Yeah, buddy! We're alive, dude. Heck yeah. Good to go. So now, you need to get her way up, tie all that hose up, and clean all the freaking oil out from under this car. Yeah, dog, she back. Take her down. <laughs> yeah, man. Dude, what a silly concept. This is great. <laughs> All right, what do you guys want to see at uh, Cletus? You want to see the lowrider doing a burnout or you want to see Ranch Tang? Ranch Tang's gonna be gnarly. <laughs> but so is this thing, dude. Heck yeah. All right, we got ourselves a lowrider again. We're gonna tie up that line. This thing I think is fine now. I fixed the oil leak. We fixed the broken hydraulic line. I need to go drive it around. It's something in suspension seemed off, but maybe it was just that hydraulic line. I don't know. Because also, these things are like made to have weird, weird geometry in their suspension. But yeah, man, El Dorado is back. <laughs> Dad. Oh, we got a horn, look at that. All right, thank you guys for watching this episode of Off the Ranch, where not only did we get a low rider running again, I also passively made $23,000 a year for the rest of time when I have this banknote. All in all, solid day for me. Thanks for watching, I love you, and I'll see you next time. Oh. Hey, what camera is that number? Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Mare. Oh, yeah!